Welcome to Moonscapes, round two for June the 15th, 2013. Um, and on closing up for the night, uh, as I separated the uh, telescope, uh, eyepiece, and uh, camera system, I decided to uh, give a little higher power eyepiece a sh shot at um, the uh, 3X Bartle. And I switched out my 21 millimeter and put in my 13 millimeter eyepiece, and we've got a little more magnification. And I can home in on that crater Rixus, which we have just talked about. Um, that one that uh, Bill Bryson, with his moon musings, had uh, excited me about and got me really interested in and got me going. Um, and so I, I'm, I'm back on to give you a, a few extra minutes of video. Uh, where we can home in um, a little closer to this crater Rix, just get a better look at it, and, and get a better idea of what I'm talking about. So let's start zooming in now. Uh, um, first of all, you can see the Altai Scarp is that white line, a white snaky line that goes up to that crater with the um, uh, central peak in it. And we'll home in on that, and we'll get uh, in, and I'm not sure how... Uh, good the scene's going to be. Uh, we might lose some definition as we get in really close. But uh, there you go. We got that crater in the center. And we still got a little more zoom, so let's keep going. We'll zoom more, a little more. Uh, and I'll leave myself one more click. Okay, now we'll move over a little more to the left. And I think we've got to raise uh, the field a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Okay, we're going to do pretty well here. Okay, now notice uh, to the left and lower left of that crater with the central peak in it, there are four craters that make kind of like a diamond shaped. Um, there are two uh, which are in a straight line that point down towards about uh, 5 o'clock. Um, there's two small craters. Um, uh, and then from the, that crater with the peak in it, pointing towards about 1 o'clock, there's one small crater. And then keep on going down towards 4 o'clock uh, uh, along that same line. And you see our crater Rixus. And you see the jumble of, of impacts all around the walls of that crater. And yeah, we're going to center that up a little better and get the last bit of zoom that we have right in on it. Okay, Rixus is now just about dead center, and there's full zoom on it. Okay, and now I know we've got quite a bit of uh, bad scene. You can see it jumping around and rolling around, but uh, we're in tighter now on Rixus. Um, it's, it's just about dead center. Let's bring it back up a little higher. And I want to try to point out, and I'm looking at this, screen, I, this preview screen myself to get a better look. And I think I can see what Bill saw in this, the, the part that he said was the, the, the coiled snake uh, out over the wall uh, of the craters and making that bridge in very, very so low sunlight again. Notice over at 8 o'clock, and again, my, my uh, orientation is different than Bill's. The way I put the camera in the telescope, the types of telescopes, light pass on, it's going to make it in a different location than Bill had the night he was doing it. Um, notice over at 8 o'clock, there is uh, a crater in the wall of Rix's, and it's got a side that appears, I'll center it a little better. Um, yeah, there's there's what looks like a, um, as part of that ruined crater, there's a wall that sticks up higher than, than the surrounding crater walls. Uh, and you can definitely see that under first sunlight, that mesa or edge of that crater is going to be the first thing that's going to pick up light. And so it's going to look like it's standing out alone and out over the crater. Um, and I believe that would be the coiled snake part of uh, what Bill saw. And then over on the opposite wall are those other craters. Um, and 
I believe the, the larger of those two up near the top would have made that cave looking appearance uh, uh, to Rixus. Uh, so as you can see that there's really nothing in there that would indicate a bridge that spanned it and collapsed and fell in. There's really no indication of that. I think everything that uh, was seen on that first night by Bill Bryson um, uh, was caused by very, very low sun angle. Um, it's an interesting problem and it's fun. We, we uh, uh, could even use better power. Now, one advantage uh, Bill has down there in Texas over me in Connecticut is his scene is phenomenal. I, Bill, I wish, I, if you're watching any of these, I wish the devil I had your scene. It, it's phenomenal compared, look, look at my boiling here. I'm, I'm using a um, 3X Barlow with a 10 inch F4 telescope and a 13 millimeter eyepiece. Uh, I'm not quite sure what the power that would equate to that, but it, it's not an extreme power. And you can see we, we've got some pretty, pretty severe wavering going on at this level. Uh, so it does, it does pre present resolution problems um, uh, that we can't really pick out uh, a lot, a lot of fine detail. Uh, but from what I'm seeing there, that, that right over about 9 o'clock, there's that uh, squared end off. See, there's, there's, a, there's a whole crater, small crater in, in, in the wall at 9 o'clock. And the lower half of it, it's got like a straight barred line um, that sticks up. Uh, and it's part of that crater structure. And I really believe that's what um, uh, looked like the coiled snake head sticking out over the bridge. Um, but anyway, that's my take on it. Uh, I thought you might be interested in uh, uh, taking a look at it at higher power where I could home in on it better. So uh, I'll throw another video on here really quick. Uh, let me back out a little bit. And as long as we're on, uh, on the air here again, let's, uh, let's just take a, a little stroll around the moon at a little better, little better um, power. It won't look so nasty. And we'll just take a look at uh, some of the uh, features of the of the moon uh, along the Terminator with this higher power. Um, I can see. Uh, let's see. Uh, what do we? I left it. I'm in. I'm in auto. Let's shut the auto off for a second to see if I can better the. Uh, why won't this? Oh, I gotta shut this one off first. Okay. There we go. And let's see if I can. Bring the exposure down, and there we get a little better look there. Um, contrast, that's what's just a contrast. That's a little much. Uh, that's pretty good there. Brightness. Bring the brightness up, bring the brightness down. Uh, either one or the other, I don't know. Anyway, we'll move along here. Um, Scope it really is giving me some nice, nice imagery. Um, there's our uh, Sea of Tranquility with that uh, blue divider line. That's really, really nice. Um, uh, I was so centered in on uh, Rixus in our last video that I didn't pay much attention to some of this other detail. Look at that interesting mountain detail right there. Those the blackish looking uh, uh, hills in there. Keep going along. Yeah, we're getting over into the Terminator a little too far here. It's getting a little dark. Uh, we'll come down the lower part. I've actually got my computer shut off that I use as my atlas, so I can't really refer to it. But uh, we're over here. That uh, crater, there's Cassini, the crater Cassini. It's just about dead center now. See, it's that uh, uh, medium to small crater. Um, we can zoom in a little bit on it. Uh, it's got uh, another fairly large crater. It looks like it's socked right over at nine o'clock on the floor of that crater. Um, that's, uh, I always found that to be an interesting crater. Uh, and then coming in from the bottom here, we have the Alpine Valley. You can see the uh, uh, the scar, the, the uh, valley. Uh, cutting right to uh, the lower half of the Apennine Mountains. Um, let's back out again and get a little better look at where we are. 
see what we're getting for color. I'm not even know. I, I don't even know where I left the color. Color, well, color sensitivity. I've got it right about fifty percent. Um, and let's see. I want to take a stroll around the edge here and see what the color does. Um, really, really kind of blowing out here. Let me see. I've got control of the exposure, so let's drop it. Uh, there we go. Oh, look at this. Uh, nice, 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 nice. I love these uh, edge shots. Uh, shows the mar. Here, here's Maricrism up here. Um, I'm actually backed out quite a way. We can home in a little closer on Mare Chrism. Uh, very interesting. Also, those two craters in the floor of Mare Chrism, which normally look like eyes, uh, don't show up very well tonight. They're really kind of lost in the uh, uh, the angle of the sun tonight. Uh, we'll come up along this edge a little farther. Uh, notice that nice... Still holding on to some of that color in the mare. That's and we'll come along here. Uh, I seem to have quite a bit of blue. Um, I I think changing the eyepieces has uh, affected the color sensitivity a little bit. I seem to be getting more. So if I turn the color down, we're down in now into the gray. We're only at about 10, 15, 20 percent maybe, and it's really gray. So when we start to go up. Um, I'm getting more blue with this 13 millimeter eyepiece. Um, and not sure. I mean, it's relatively dark now. I mean, we're well past uh, sunset. Notice at the edge of the moon out there, it's black. It's uh, so we're it's later in the night. I don't know why we have so much more blue with this eyepiece. So yeah, that's part of that color issue. I still say that there's. Uh, some aberration with this camera, some of it's real. Um, uh, I think the color in the, of the mare floor or, uh, with that blue shading, I definitely think that's real. Um, uh, but some of it, the, uh, some of when you get out way out near the edge, especially the greens. Uh, if you've seen some uh, shots uh, done with very low power, you get nice color in the center. But if you, you get a, a bright green color around the outside, and <laughs> I've, I've heard people say, well, what is that, trees or grass? No, that is definitely color aberration when you get that situation. Uh, that green, uh, uh, we don't have any, any hint of it here, but uh, uh, it, it can be caused uh, when you push the color too much with uh, uh, a low power eyepiece. Uh, image is a little bit dark let's let's go back and drop in the uh, auto get off uh, this area here uh, yeah it's taken over a little better uh, okay we're back over there's those those three craters there with Theophilus with the uh, uh, nice central peak um, and our Altai scarp naturally which is that white snaky line and that leads us to Picolomy Malami crater Colony, I believe it's something like I haven't got the map on it. Uh, I don't have it turned on right now, uh, but that's our that's our uh, guide post to uh, Rix's crater. Uh, let's go back to it one more time. Take another look. We'll move that over. Put our four crater. They look all a bit like a distorted baseball diamond. Uh, you got the crater with the central peak. And then forming a triangle with them over at uh, 1 o'clock and 5 o'clock are two small craters. And go a little farther over at 5 o'clock there's another crater smaller. And straight up to that is that destroyed looking crater almost. And that is Rixus. Um, moving in and I'll center it. And Rixus is now just about dead centered. And it's too bad the scene's very unsteady. Uh, but you can see uh, it's a relatively uneventful looking crater other than, I mean, it's got a smooth floor. Uh, the walls are just peppered though, with uh, impact craters. Uh, the walls have been, been beat up really, really pretty good. Um, and I believe that one there at 9 o'clock that has a little whiter look to it, a whitish look to it. 
It's the edge of one of those impact craters on the wall. Uh, it's kind of like a, a straight wall, which is formed as part of that formation. And I believe that is the one that is catching the sunlight at uh, sunrise and looking like that uh, coiled snake, uh, which Bill Bryson on his Moon Musing sites has called uh, Snake Bridge. And again, Bill, if you're out there listening, uh, I'd love to uh, have you do a video um, and uh, check this crater out yourself uh, and uh, see what you think about it. It'd be very interesting to see uh, and compare notes. Uh, you definitely got the edge on the scene over me here in Connecticut. I'm never going to top your scene. Uh, so you, you're probably going to get better high power views than I'm going to get here. I'm even using my 10 inch. Um, there are rare nights when I get really, really good, good scene. And, um, maybe on one of those nights I could, uh, could do something with it. But, uh, it's tough. It's tough for me to, to get a real good night. Let me, let me just try, um, um, changing a few things while we're sitting on it and let's see uh, uh, let's see what uh, uh, turn that white balance back on I turned that off by mistake let me touch full around some of these controls and see if we can pull any more detail out um, if I really boost the contrast um, I don't like that look but it does it does show you more more detail there uh, there you can see that nine o'clock there is that that it, it looks to me it just looks like a, a part of a ruined end of that crater um, and it stands up higher than the rest um, and, that, and it just it just to me looks like uh, it's the squared off edge of that crater and that's all it is uh, and when the sun hits it, it's standing up higher than its surrounding territory, so uh, the sun picks it up as a straight line. And looking across the crater, I can't see anything on the other side. The, the, the craters on the other side are, are really pretty well formed. I don't see anything that would look like a tunnel going in that uh, Bill thought he had seen. Um, I got my uh, movement here pretty fast. You can see that mount jumping around. This telescope's a lot heavier than my other one. Uh, this Orion mount has a 40 pound load capacity on it. Um, and this 10 inch F4 tube assembly weighs about 30 pounds uh, without eyepieces or any other thing else on it. So uh, when you set the uh, slew rate too fast, you can see what happens. It jumps a little bit. See that, see that jumping that's caused by the uh, telescope that uh, actually shakes just for a second or two after the mount stops. Uh, we can cure that by slowing the, the, the rate down here. I'll see when we slow the rate down, uh, we can eliminate some of that jumping around. But uh, there, uh, unfortunately, in bad scene and wavering at a higher power is the crater Rixus. Right now, pretty much in the center of the view, and uh, you tell me, uh, do you see a snake bridge in there? I really don't see it. Uh, and as I said, I have seen no indication of any NASA uh, hiding things by uh, blocking things on a map. So I can't, uh, I've never seen that to be the case. Um, uh, like I say, that's just uh, something that uh, um, Bill might have run into a, a newer version of a map where uh, the, that section had not been photographed yet. I don't know exactly what he found when he said it was blacked out on his application that he was using. Um, don't know what application it is. I'm old school. In fact, if I had to send a text, uh, my life depended upon it, I'd die. Because I don't know how to send a text and I don't really want to know. <laughs> I'm happy with my little cell phone and um, I'm going to talk to somebody. I don't text. Uh, that, that's how I'm into the electronics I am. Uh, I still amaze myself that I can actually take uh, these videos and put them up on YouTube. Uh, <laughs> it's... Uh, 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 it's uh, beyond my uh, reach to uh, get into a lot of this uh, new technology. But anyway, there is the crater Rixus um, and uh, the story of it. And uh, I guess you're going to have to make up your own mind as to what you see there. And again, thanks to Bill Bryson for, uh, for a nice subject, for a project for this uh, 
month. And uh, like I say, Bill, if you're out there, please uh, uh, give this crater another shot. Like I said, uh, 5.3 days uh, from new moon is when it's on the Terminator most times. Um, uh, and uh, again, a good observation 24 and 48 hours later, we'll get the sun up higher where you can compare views to sunrise. Uh, so with that again, and look at that, just fooling around here, I'm already 20 minutes into another video. Uh, so I guess uh, it's time for me to uh, close my app here and uh, sign off again for tonight. For the And for the second time tonight, uh, good health, good, uh, good seeing guys, and uh, we'll see you next time around. Take care of it, guys.